the 5,000 on the maintenance and repair. 84 Chevy. 84 GM, yeah. Military truck. 24 volt. Don't okay. have a lot of people calling yeah. that. Well, in, your, in Josh, do that. The 5,000 is just, in, it might be a very high number. Um, just to have it analyzed, in which I don't know if the highway department um, could analyze it and double check it, um, being a county vehicle. Um, I mean, it's great to use it now, but we're trying to look in the future three years away. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. Understand that. How many miles did it have on it? I can't, I don't recall, sir. Sorry. But that's a discussion about budget. Next um, was the increases um, on the maintenance contracts. Um, I won't leave that the same. Uh, it has thirty-five thousand on it. Um, initially, um, was nineteen thousand previous years. So that would decrease the overall total on my budget sixteen thousand um, dollars. But for utilities, I increased it five thousand. The reason for the increase is. Uh, with the boiler repairs and stuff like that, we're going to, and when they test it, get, you know, run through the checks and balances, and with the AC uh, repairs and stuff like that, we're going to use water, extra water, we're going to use extra gas um, as they do the repairs. So I just increased it. Currently, we're still setting with uh, 22,000 still with underneath utilities, uh, which I think that's a little should be a, a little bit lower than that, probably around $8,000 lo lower than that, um, just for, for current past years for where we should be on a consistent year of business open, like uh, we should be. So with the anticipation of the excess water usage, gas usage, um, I see the utility being used up a little bit more. Back up to maintenance contracts. Yes, ma'am. Have 19, 000, but you're requesting 35. That's where I said I, I want to eliminate the 35 request and put it and put it back to the 19,000. Sorry. Okay. So maintenance contracts 19,000. Yes, ma'am. Um, the other increases I have was um, building repair and structure. Um, I presented um, numerous um, photos and concerns with uh, which I'm still working on getting contacts with contractors and stuff like that. Um, the issues that we have with the building uh, can be very, very difficult to get contractors to even come in and even give me an estimate. Um, what exactly are you wanting to repair? The plaster walls, the cracks in the walls. Um, example, above the commissioner's seating area, like the crack. What has happened that over the years, with the um, humidity gets in between the plaster, concrete, um, and it pushes it out, makes bubbles, and it busts off. Um, probation hallway, if you get a chance, probation hallway would be a prime example of those issues. Um, and this plaster is very thick and very heavy when it falls. Um, so have get, we've been trying to get contractors to come in, give me estimates or an ideas and options to present to the commissioners and council if need be. Um, on what, how to proceed going forward. Is that the only thing that you're looking at repairing? Is just plaster walls? Plaster walls and um, seeing on the structure on the floors, you can see uh, where the tile is. So the tile, plaster walls, and the marble all need to be looked at. And at this time, like plaster, even itself, is almost a specialized contractor to even get it to come in. Um, heating and heating and AC put a ten thousand dollar increase on that because as I have purchased last year the new compressor um, for the primary train unit outside um, is still sitting in the museum for the fact that across the board talking to contractors that have knowledge of it um, in which I have seen a report from an uh, insurance claim where it gets hit by lightning. Um, my challenge to the contractor before he installed it was what kind of power or surge protector can we put on that train unit 
um, this is talking to Watson, to NH Chapman, to uh, I think it was Shambhal and Sons. Um, but they said that for some weird reason, it gets people so uh, just put that for the AC so that way that can finish off repair because um, R22 refrigerant, once he puts the compressor in, it's going for over $100 a unit. So it takes about 120 units to fill that thing back up. So it's still sitting in the basement though? It's sitting in the museum, the compressor. So it's not being utilized yet? No, no it's not being utilized yet. So the backup train unit is the one that's giving the building AC right now. So the increase is for exactly what? For the maintenance cost for what is left. So if it gets in there and it puts a new compressor in, other comp other surge protector. Yeah, correct. Sorry. But if it's still in the basement, not being used. Why will we need this? Well, it's going to be utilized when the boiler system is <coughs> on, and where they no longer need for an AC, it gives them the ability to work on the AC unit with the boiler system down. So that way, because the way the current system is, other than the third floor. If the boiler's on, the second and first floor does not have AC. If the AC's on, the second, third, the second, first and second floor doesn't have heat because they run independently. They run, so they both use the same water source to supply heat or AC to the building. On capital. I'm jumping all over the place. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. You're fine. Still learning. The la last two is a uh, request for a utility shed. Um, the utility shed that I have now was a decent size for just a long time. <coughs> but when I have supplied for. Oh, I'm sorry. Second page. So it's not for the third one. It's not for the third one. So what line item are you doing? The very last one. Very last one. Perfect. I didn't realize that it jumped. I'll learn. The utility shed that we have now, and with the discussions of, and the need to do something with that museum um, where I currently have my push mower, my walk behind snow blower, my seasonal um, solar salt, or I'm sorry, um, sidewalk salt, which I buy in bulk because it's a lot cheaper that way. Um, those items would not be able to stay in the museum, nor do I have place to put them in my shed. Um, I have done, I went and got estimates, and as the year went on, month after month, and the increase in uh, supplies and materials, they got way too high to even consider. Um, but the amount that I'm requesting is a lot higher than what, just in case for materials, than what the sheds, which is a 12 by 16. Um, so, one here as request would be would cover a 12 I'm sorry a, a 12 by 20 shed which would go in the same slab that our current utility shed would fit on 12 by 20 is that yes ma'am so the 12 by 20 shed will cost twenty thousand dollars with the shipment of it if I go from here local um, the last estimate for like little fawn it was Twelve thousand some odd dollars, so and that's plain Jane. Correct. Why are we asking for twenty? To make sure that I have, with the cost and the increase in materials and everything else, that I have the cost covered to be able to purchase the utility shed. I feel I can't predict what the materials are going to be when this, if this budget was to fully go into effect at the twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so you're saying at the time that you got the little fun estimate, you don't think that's going to be the estimate going forward? No, I do not. Because you've got two estimates and they're increased Correct. really. Yeah, it, really it jumped. Increased. Uh, Little Fawn was over $2,000 and 
Oak Lane was over five. Is there any way to get Little Farm to update that estimate before we do the final budget? Yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That would be the best option okay, I think do to do. Then you have exactly what you need. And so the current situation, if I were to do, um, try to speed this up. Just the general maintenance on the lawnmower alone. I feel like uh, $600 a month or $600 per season, two seasons to go get it maintenance and service. Something that I think that just changes the oil and checking the blades. That Cody could easily do if they're responsible, you know, responsible for using the lawnmower. Um, this would give me adequate room, storage room for all my equipment, all the custodial equipment, and the storage room for the sidewalk salt. Um, which is probably roughly about 50 bags, 50, 50 bags, yeah, 50 bags, a 50 pounds bag. Um, but right now, the mower, the snow mower, and the saw is all I'm using. Great. Okay. Um, last one, give you an item number 4040, which is the fixtures and furniture. Um, is an increase of a thousand. A lot, of the, a lot of the fixtures around here, lighting fixtures, um, we still have the old um, <clears throat> tube knob wiring to them. Um, a lot of corrosion needs to be replaced. A lot of, uh, I've already this year replaced a lot of the drain pipes and um, sink fixtures because of decay or um, malfunctioning. And there's more to go. You know, this would give me the ability to be able to go through and fix those. And get those up. Is that where are you at? The um, 4,040 pictures and furniture. Okay. That's all I have. I have a one question. Yes, ma'am. Um, on your part time custodian, do you still need two? Yes. And part time help is just one, right? Yes. part-time help and custodian part-time right. because the part-time help was covered all year across custodian part-time um, Shalom was on and then I had a gap just like just a, for a couple days. Yeah, yeah and then the need came on and uh, she, so I have one part-time help just which one, is but in case he needed one for like COVID and everything Okay to hire two to stay within this budget. My current part-time help is 25 hours. $75 for them 
<clears throat> for next year and only a 7% increase on myself. But we have been slammed, so they've been a great help to me. Uh, the other area, um, I didn't increase the autopsy fund, but just so you guys know, um, Tiffany County has began sending us bills for anybody from Carroll County that they do an autopsy on. So instead of us just doing autopsies, we are getting their bills too. So I'm down to, I think, like 12,000 this year left, and we're in the part of the time of the year where we tend to get busy. Um, so I can see that we need to be higher because she's autopsy do you have a say no, so when they all talk to you? So anybody that's from Carroll County that becomes deceased while they're in Tiffany County, they're on top. If it is transported, um, like say we have a cardiac arrest that's transported there, I know we had one last week. Um, if they choose to do an autopsy, as long as they can justify that the call originated in our county. So a wreck, um, your overdoses, your and there are some medical that could fall under that and she chooses to bill us their state statute that as long as you can prove that it originated in our county, then we are responsible for the autopsy. So you don't have a say in whether you autopsy or not with the state statute. If you if you were autopsy in our county, would you have a say of whether you would autopsy or not? Um, I, you, the coroner has the judgment as to whether we autopsy or whether we don't. But not if it goes to Tiffany if, County. If it's out of county, that's their judgment, not mine. And we send all of ours out of county? We don't have a hospital. <laughs> Isn't there a reason to do one? I mean, yeah, but she doesn't. I mean, they're coming into her ER and she doesn't know anything about them, so. I know she's autopsying a lot. I don't. I don't necessarily know them. I've called Doug on a couple of them to justify, because when the start of the year we start again, and it's a new corner over there in um, White County Corner, and I both talked about it because we've never gotten these bills. Um, but that's what he said too: is we want to at least justify that you know. So most that so far I've gotten, I've gotten with Doug um, and made sure that what the call is about because I have no clue. If I'm not called here, I don't have a clue what goes there um, unless I'm listening to the- Well, we're not getting yeah. bills unless you're called to the call. No, we don't get these. Cause like, so say like last week we had, and I don't even know what it was. I know we had a, 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 a female that was, a CPR was in progress at the scene. They don't call me unless they call it at the scene, but ambulance transported because they got her back. Well, I do know that she did pass away a few days later, so then I'm guessing they will do an autopsy on her. I haven't gotten that bill yet, but I'm guessing they will. So then I have no clue. Like, I only know because I happen to be listening and I've had a couple reach out to me about this person to see if the person did pass away. So that's the only reason I know she did. Um, I would assume that if there's a death of a Carroll County resident that you should be contacted. Maybe I'm wrong, but I would think that would are they protocol? Are they doing these because of COVID? Um, some of them. I don't know exactly her, all her reasons. Some I'm guessing, but others just like that. I mean, if she doesn't know the background behind something, she's going to autopsy. So if there's a wreck and somebody goes and they die in a couple, three days, they're going to do an autopsy to find out why. Mm -hmm. Yep. So those costs are <laughs> I mean, because we're out of county all the time. I, even Methodist can send us. I didn't, nobody's ever really done it, but it's happening now. <laughs> now, are we getting billed by Tiffany New County plus the pathologist? No, that does, we're, no we're getting billed. We're just getting the pathologist like, bill. We're getting the pathologist bill from Tiffany County Corner. So we pay, the, well, we pay the treasurer for Tiffany New County. Um, basically the pathologist fee. Pathologist yep. fee. Yep. Is that a set fee for? Yeah. Okay. Theirs was, I think their doctor's 1500 So about 1500 on every autopsy. Now that also depends, I'm sure, if they run toxicology, if they don't. And that just depends on what you run, how much that runs. Are there any of these that are questionable whether they should have been autopsy? 
Um, just, I mean, I don't know without being, I don't know how much I have to be able to go in to look at medical records and stuff because technically it's not my case. So, if a wife. Unfortunately, like I said, it is a state statute. If we can, they can originate, if they can verify originated there. Medical calls is where that's gonna get tough because where do you determine if somebody's heart attack started at this point versus another point? I mean, that's a tough one for me. I mean, obviously. Well, this is a fundraiser, so that's yeah. uh, really unfortunate. Right, yeah. So we have gotten quite a few of those, just FYI. So I didn't ask for an increase, but that's just something that can, you know, can keep in the back of your mind because we've been using our autopsy money basically just on our own. Well, I feel that if we're going to be getting certain charges, that you need to get more involved and find out why. Well, I can't only to the limit and whatever they're willing to give me. I mean, it's it's you mean to tell it's me they're not going to give you information when you're the Carroll County if coroner. They pay it, they'll probably stop. They'll probably stop doing. I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I don't believe that. You're the Carroll County coroner. You have every right to know the information of why they're doing autopsies on our people. Well, but they're technically not ours because they end up being a county kind of case. They don't. They don't die here. So. Okay, so you're talking about just the ones that we don't transport there. I have. I have control of the ones we don't transport. Okay. That's okay. that you're remaining everyone that you no. sent there. No. I have control over anyone that passes away here inside Carroll County. County. Yes. So you're just talking but about as soon as they cross that border, even if they're in the back of the ambulance, it becomes a, the other county, wherever they go, White County, Tippy is usually where they go. So as soon as they cross the border. Okay, so you just, okay, they die here in their home. You put them in, or, or they have a heart attack in their home, and they're transported to Tippecanoe the County. Then they pass theirs. away in the hospital, then that's there. Yep. If they're transported, it does not become ours. So we only have control over the ones that are gone, that are here, so that EMS calls. Who, who oversees you then? Um, nobody. nobody. <laughs> the governor, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I mean. State. So somebody state the state board. Board oversees you, right? Not really. No. We have an association. I mean, we have a state board association. I'm on that I'm on that state board association as a board member. But okay. I, well, I mean, somebody has to be able so she, let's just say she autopsied every single person and none of them were justified. Who, what, what oversight body would come back and, 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 and... I mean, we would take that, I guess, to the state board. I don't know who would make, I mean, it's the coroner's judgment whether they decide, to, I can. I could autopsy every single person in our county and I don't know that anybody could really do anything about that. It when in doubt, if we have any question, we do one. So if we had a morgue, you would do the, I mean, who does our, if we had a morgue and we had a situation where we- irrelevant. They're still gonna die there. If we had a morgue- Because we don't have a hospital. You, would, you wouldn't do autopsies or anything here because they have to be done at a hospital. No, I would do them here if we had a morgue. So you would do- We would cut out basically our storage fees and our morgue fees that we pay right now. So let me repeat that one more time. If we had a morgue and we had a situation where we had a building to assume this, you would do the autopsies here in county, not if they've been transported to the hospital, the, but the still major, not if they've been transported. The major expense is going to be the pathologist that does the, the autopsy. We've you had a call few somebody in to do the autopsy. Do what? You would call somebody in. We still, yeah, that's basically what we would have. A that would be the autopsy. So we would still position. have the cost. Okay. You're going to have the cost of a doctor. Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Which is how about how much? Um, 15 to 75 on top. 1500. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't include like said Most of them we can get state has a grant right now. So right now, if we have any suspicions, um, somebody might have overdosed. I mean, that, any suspicion. We don't have, I mean, we don't have to have proof. If we don't know, <coughs> then the state will pay it right now. But that's a grant. So I don't know how long that'll last. Or if we request something additional, like sometimes we'll request like a glucose level or something, um, carbon monoxide, we've asked for that before. Um, those are additional fees, so we pay those separate. But the state mostly has picked up our toxicology bills. 
through the grant, which is good because they're about $200. Well, I would have to assume that if you start getting more bills and the other counties start getting more bills, you're all going well, to conglomerate yeah. and say, whoa, well, what's like going I said, on? So far, I've checked with Doug almost all the all ones I've gotten. I mean, luckily, we haven't gotten a huge amount. We've probably gotten five or six, maybe, so far. I mean, but that's a big chunk of money. Um, and so far, we've pretty much decided that most of them have been something that's been transported either they tried to work on what they have gotten something a little back. So um, the other one I did add a cell phone again. I, I know I asked last year, this is really, really important and I want to stress this one of anything because again, my personal cell phone, we go to crime scenes. So if we have a case that goes for my whole phone and my whole personal life, which has my school life and my work life and everything else on it, goes to court. So, I really feel this is huge. Um, my detectives and everything, our prosecutor cringe that I don't have a phone that I can use specifically just for um, this because you've got emails, you've got everything coming over. Um, and I know FirstNet does the nice um, $40 or they keep low cost, but that one's an important one. If I ask for anything, that would be on like the sheriff's department's plan that we check that out. Possibly. I have not because I didn't know if we could be in a different department. But I, I don't know that either. That yeah, I could look into I know, it. Uh, Mark has a plan that he said he could add people to, I thought. Who was that? It drops it down to $35 Who, a month. Who was that? Mike. Oh, okay. Instead I know mine's under the fire department personally just so I mean I know but yeah if you I mean I don't know if I can piggyback the county on that one but I'm sure they piggyback ones because that's how we do the fire department so I'm not gonna check that out. okay and let them know okay yeah when I was checking on it that was the difference if they have their own plan it's forty dollars a month if they pay me on somebody else's then it's thirty five dollars a month okay um, and then um, training I did increase the prosecutor and detectives have asked me to several different um, trainings that are important for me um, along working with them. Can we jump back up to the fuel line? Yes. I, I mean, the fuel line is up like yes. six times the amount. Um, we have a bigger truck. Um, and well, I can't imagine that well, van was too one, fuel efficient. Was well, it? no. Uh, I don't remember because I didn't really have to fill it all that much. Um, when I have a call, we typically go out of town two or three times a week for that one call. So you consider that's a lot of driving. And that one thing will get me about probably two times back and forth, maybe three. I'm getting about 14 miles a gallon. Do you have? And I, some of it I just put because I didn't know what was going to happen to it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Do you? I mean, I assume you keep stats on like your runs, and uh, do you keep like a mileage log of when you fuel up and that type of thing? Okay. Yes. I keep all the log, and I have all the receipts that I send to the auditor's office. Who do you think your fuel what? Do you have a entry mark? Do we have a big card? Do they give you a discount? I don't know. I think we talked about this before. No, because I wondered why you weren't on the web. With right. The, uh, the WEX, yeah. The WEX card. Yeah. You asked me about that before. I don't know that we ever decided why we didn't. We might check it out and compare. Okay. I mean, it's just tax. I think you do get a discount. Yeah, I was going to say. I feel like we do, but I don't. Yeah. We get a rebate also, so just want to check. Check it out. Okay. Any other? What do you need? Uh, utilities. Um, well, right now, obviously no, but I'm. I we put in. I think hoping that you know we would hopefully soon have a more. Um, I mean that is another huge security issue because we're sending our decedents to another county where we aren't really having a good security of knowing who's in and out and. 
we, we aren't able to watch and know who's in and out in somebody else's facility. So security wise, that's a biggie that we just want to watch a building be a big. So if they didn't have an autopsy, would we keep them in the morgue and then they would go to the funeral? Not necessarily. If somebody hasn't decided because if it's sudden, they don't necessarily know who they're going to use. So yes, we would store to lay the side. In the um, county, if you had If I had them, yep. Um, it, it, and I have had to do that. And our the bad thing is, is our other counties are getting full. Um, we ran into a spell where I had four calls in two days. Um, White County was slammed at the same time, so we didn't even have storage. Um, I ended up being able to go to Rossville. Um, thank goodness the funeral home, one of the funeral homes worked with me there, but it was a case of we weren't sure with an autopsy or not, but we ended up autopsy. <clears throat> so we're running into the fact that we're running out of places to go at times because everybody's getting slammed and full. It's been an issue a couple times. Towards the end of last year, we got really busy where it was an issue and then we just had this recent spell where it's been an issue again. They have, they can hold three. And so. Yes, I increased um, the electric from, uh, let's see, it was, over here. it was $2,200 last year to $25. I was uh, a little uncertain when I filled out this budget that it was going to hold up. Um, the camping has kind of, had kind of backed off in July for a little bit. Now it's picking back up. So the bills, um, between the two parts are running uh, $3,400 a month. $300, I'm going to say $300 uh, would be the max on the, the combined. So um, we're having a lot of usage in the park. Some people are, you know, most people have are using campers or using 30 amp service. So I increased that just to make sure that we had enough to carry us through the year. I, uh, like I said, when the budget was initially filled out, I was a little nervous about whether at the rate right now we have, um, we have 1380 in there. That does not count the month of August. I don't know if July has been out of there or not, has been taken out of the line. I, I, have, I haven't had a budget worksheet, which I'll be getting That's the reason I increased that. Um, to start at the tar, uh, top, um, our park steward, that we, uh, when we initially put that in, and uh, you approved the pay for the park steward, um, we requested 650. That is for the six months of the uh, time that the park is open for camping. Dear Creek Park Steward. Um, this gentleman does all the cleaning, the receipts, taking in of monies, and out of rules, um, to clean the restrooms and the building. And plus, he goes over and above and works the other six months of the year, just on uh, tree trimming, as a you know part-time basis, just to, to keep it up. Uh, that's the reason I, I request $100 more for him in, in appreciation, and I think uh, he is worth that, him and his wife. Um, moving down to housekeeping and office supplies, I increased those by $50. Um, the office supplies basically uh, we use receipts that are printed here in county in triplicate. Uh, they have gone up. We're paying the least of the uh, 
say if we order 25, it costs more than it does almost as much as if we order 50. But we have to go to numerical order on those, so I kind of wait until they run low. Um, so I increased that. Uh, I will be ordering one more, which is going to pretty much wipe out the office supplies of probably 20, 25 or 50 more. The housekeeping supplies, due to the high uh, demand for campers and uh, clubhouse rental at Deer Creek Park, we, uh, we are using quite a bit more uh, toilet tissue, paper towels, soap, bleach that we mix ourselves, or 50 50 mix of bleach, um, air fresheners, so on and so on, window cleaner, uh, toilet bowl cleaner. So um, we're at 61.30 on that. I am getting a list together right now as to what they're going to need for the remaining two months. Um, let's see. Uh, electric, we discussed. The repair and maintenance I increased by, uh, by $100. Um, one of the reasons for that is $400 does not hardly cover two parts for repair and maintenance. Luckily, you know, um, we can go to furniture and fixtures for some of the things to make repairs uh, and things like that. But um, we discovered that uh, none of us were experts at winterizing the park at Deer Creek. So we had, uh, uh, a few years ago, we had new showers put in. We found out after the first year when I shut down the water, that those showers had to be taken apart. They got taken out of them and replaced in the spring. So we have that hired now by a local contractor. Uh, it's usually just a service call. Uh, it can range from 75 to 175, uh, depending on how long the time that he's there. That's the reason for the increase on that, uh, repair and maintenance. Um, the trash and miscellaneous, I don't know if you're aware, but um, we have been, there was a function uh, this month, we're still in August, that uh, was at Fresh Post Park. The commissioner's okay. We have a, a gentleman that's been coming in and playing music one night um, on a Saturday night. In August, there's another one on 9-11. Another one in October, and uh, next year I would like to uh, get another dumpster, either from the same company or another one that may be more local. Um, so that's the reason I put uh, in the $200 increase on that. I think between the initial uh, 600 and the extra 200, we'll have enough with, uh, with money left over, hopefully to. Uh, Cover those two. Furniture and fixtures, I just kind of, uh, that's a bit, the last increase, I just wanted to, to mention that fact. We, uh, we're doing, we're planning on doing an upgrade of LED lighting in uh, the basement of the clubhouse at Fresh Coast Park, or at Deer Creek Park, and uh, hopefully we can take uh, uh, that extra money and do an upgrade on our fluorescent lights. They're going to be just an LED fluorescent uh, upstairs and downstairs. That's the plan, uh, plan for next year for furniture and fixtures and hopefully nothing major uh, is needed. Uh, one thing I want to mention to you, I do have a, a, um, on a budget worksheet, the donation fund. Um, We just, I just put in $75 this, this month. Uh, uh, it's changing from 477 to 552 now, so there will be a change there. Uh, right now, um, just, uh, just for general information to cancel, um, year-to-day collections for the two parts is at uh, 475. I think last year we brought in about half of the budget that we have received. We were able to back by rails. I think we're going to do better this year. I think it's going to surpass that. So we have the clubhouse at Deer Creek. It's rented almost every weekend from here on out. The class of 1980 just had a reunion there this past weekend. 
camping Labor Day weekend, so it's, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on, and uh, I'm just trying to submit this budget to try to cover the cost of the that we need to plan for next year. Any questions? When, have, you, have you increased rates for camping? Or no, we have. Our camping rates are Deer Creek Park are thirty dollars for a uh, RV, and that's right on par with state park. Yeah. They charge thirty dollars for electric things. That's just electric hookup. We do off the water hookup too because there's a stick it in a great outlet. Uh, we've had some requests for for people that have larger campers that are regular campers up there to upgrade a couple spots to fifty, you know, because. I don't know. I have an air conditioner in my camper, but I don't set it in there all the time. <laughs> and they have to run it, you know, some two monster air conditioners to cool a camper. That's the that's the reason for the request for 50 uh, 50 amp service. Um, maybe maybe we can upgrade that. Well, I mean, it's one of those same plan for down the road. Okay. Charge a little more. Yeah. They only, they're not able to use their full capabilities of what they have in their camper because of the 30 yeah, outlets that we have. There. And that's all been upgraded in the last 10 to 15 years. We put in all the next water lines and all the electric wire and new outlets up there. So it's like anything else that's underground. Um, what's above ground gets wear and tear. So that's, that's where the, uh, the outlets are at. So. Yeah, but we charge thirty dollars for that. Even if you have a tent and put on a, an electrical water outlet or a electrical water campsite, it's still thirty dollars because ten dollars if you're using a primitive site. But if you want to set up a tent and use a, a modern site, you pay for the modern site. So. Anything else? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. All right, thank you very much.